Hi, my name is Dina Swanson. I'm an occupational therapist and certified hand therapist. And today I'm going to go over with you some provocative testing. Uh, with the provocative testing, we always want to make sure that we do our active range of motion measurements, passive range of motion measurements, and grip measurements before we actually begin our provocative testing. Because that information is going to give us a little bit of an insight into which areas and which, which areas are problematic and then which tests go along with those problematic areas. So is there a limitation in active range of motion or is there just a limitation with passive range of motion? Or is it just painful when you put them through that passive range of motion? So the ones we're going to go over today are people who have pain with passive forearm pronation, but there's no range of motion limitations. So as I take my patient and I'm passively putting them into forearm pronation, that is when they're eliciting and telling me that they have pain. They move, may move on their own and have no pain and have full range of motion, but a lot of times with these patients, it's more so when they're lifting or when there's resistance added to that motion where they're going to have some pain. So I'm taking my patient, I'm putting them passively into forearm pronation, and they're saying that they have pain. When they state that they have pain, the first thing that you want to ask is if the pain is dorsally located or if it's volarly located, okay? If the pain is dorsally located, you're going to perform a DRUJ ballotment test. Okay, so in order to perform this test, we're going to take the ulnar styloid, okay, we're going to put the forearm in neutral, and we're going to move the ulnar head while stabilizing the radial head, uh, radial side, styloid, and we're going to take that ulnar head and volarly and dorsally displace it. When we're doing this test, we're looking for a lack of endpoint resistance and also pain, okay? We want to see if there's any laxity, especially in comparison to the other side. So this is a test that you definitely want to do bilaterally. If the patient is saying, no, the pain is not dorsal, but it's volar on this side, we also can perform a DRUJ ballotment test just as the, the way I showed you. But there are other things that can come into play when there's some volar wrist pain as well. So we want to now perform a volar radial ulnar ligament shift test if there's some volar pain along with your DRUJ test. So if you've done your DRUJ test and it's negative, then we're going to move forward to the volar ulnar radial ulnar ligament shift test. And in this one, instead of having our forearm in neutral, we now have the forearm in pronation. We're stabilizing. There we go. We're stabilizing the distal ulna and carpus, and the other hand applies volar directed translation through the distal radius. So instead of now moving my ulna, I'm going to be moving my radius, okay? And again, we're looking for pain, we're looking for mostly laxity, and we're going to also do this test bilaterally. Now, let's say the patient says, I have volar pain, you've done your DRUJ test, it's negative. You've moved on to your volar radial ulnar shift, ligament shift test, and that's negative. The next thing we want to look for is our ulnar, vul, ulnar fulval sign, okay? So this is going to indicate a possible TFCC injury, ulnar uh, carpal impaction syndrome. And with this test, all we're doing is we're palpating the soft spot in between the ulnar styloid and the fissiform, okay? And I'm going to palpate in through here, and I'm going to ask the patient, is there any pain with this? And if that's positive, then we finally have a diagnosis for our problematic patient who has pain with passive forearm pronation with no range of motion limitations. Thank you, and I hope this helps you.